You know, the Human Genome Project may be complicated, but it reveals a simple truth. That's the focus of a new children's book by our colleague, who's also a best-selling author. I sat down with the anchor of ABC News Live Prime, Lindsay Davis. Lindsay, I'm so glad you're here on that side of the desk. I'm so happy to, to share the desk with you exactly. in this moment. You know, I've long admired your work, obviously, as a journalist, but you are such a fabulous children's author as well. This is called The Smallest Spot of a Dot, your fifth book. The subhead is The Little Ways Were Different, The Big Ways Were the Same. What's this book about? So I've always had this fascination with the, at least the first phase of the Human Genome Project, which that was 13 years long. It involved thousands of researchers from around the world. It was such a comprehensive undertaking in the science world. And basically what they found, because they were setting out to map the blueprint of human DNA. And what they found is that we're 99.9% .9 alike when it comes to the sequencing of the DNA. So it's just 0.1% that determines our hair color, our blood type, anything that makes us unique. And so I was talking to a friend of mine about how would we make something like so complex, mm. simplified that even the youngest among us, somebody who's just four years old would be able to understand this. And we came up with the idea of dots because the molecules, it's 3.1 billion molecules in the DNA, right? So in the book, uh, I call it the me, my, mind dot, the thing that makes me shine dot, the one of a kind dot, anything that, that makes us unique. So it's both celebrating the differences, but also embracing the way that we're so the same. We talk a lot about how representation matters, yeah. and obviously the kids in this book represent a very diverse background. Why is that important to you? You know, uh, I'm so thrilled to be working with Lucy Flemier again, the illustrator, and my goal really in all of my books, I feel like I will have uh, successfully achieved what I was setting out for. If any child that picks up the book is able to point to a child and a character and say, that looks like me. Mm. She looks like me. He looks like, like I do. And uh, we even have in this book a, a little girl who's in a wheelchair. I just feel like it's so important to bring everybody into the tent. And that's something that in recent years has been picking up. But um, let's say even prior to George Floyd, there was such a lack. You would either find a book that typically had a white protagonist, but other than that, it would just be black characters or just a certain kind of character. And in these books, I really feel like in any of the, any given spread, you're going to see somebody who represents every race. We know you as a hard-hitting journalist. We know you in your political analysis. What made you get interested in doing a series of children's books? You know, I've always considered myself to be a storyteller and what we do sure. every day, right? Um, but it's often the doom and the gloom, the mayhem, the murder, the missing, right? And shortly after I had my son and I was reading children's books to him from the time he was an infant, and I first and foremost, I thought, I'm a storyteller, I'd love to write books. And then when I really started to see the lack of books with children who look like my son, mm. rather than just, you know, grumble and complain about it, I felt like, you know, let me be a part of the solution and just start creating books with characters that not only look like him, but all different kinds of children. And so what is the main message for this particular book? And if there's an overarching theme that threads through all of it, what would it be? Embracing each other. It's self-love and love for others. Um, I think it's about empathy, about you know teaching that in an early age. So I really am trying to just instill that message in kids. I love that you took this incredibly complex concept of the Human Genome Project and really made it accessible, not just to the kids, but to the parents who are reading it to the kids. You know, as a mother who was at one time, now my son you know, can read on his own, but when I was doing the reading, I always wanted, first of all, something to kind of entertain me while I'm reading these books at nauseum again and again, um, but also for there to be a little bit of a takeaway you know, kind of a, a sugar-coated medicine um, for, for the kids. Well, the medicine tastes great. Thanks so <laughs> much, Lindsay, for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks, Juju. And good luck. It's a bestseller. Already. Hopefully. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.